Heat is uh, in the San Luis Obispo County. We do uh, are becoming more involved into San Inez and into the Santa Barbara area, and we are welcoming members in that area. A little bit about HEAT, we work uh, with CAL FIRE, we work with the Sheriff's Department, and we work with CHP. We are on a call out for CHP and the Sheriff's Department. We work on, um, we, we respond to trailer accidents, we respond to loose animals on the road. Uh, we respond to neglect cases. We, we have safe houses throughout our community that we bring in animals that are neglected. So, and we'll go through some of those here in a little bit. I have this um, PowerPoint that John Henry put together for us. So one of the things that we do is we listen to scanners. We have several members that live, listen to scanners all the time. And we are listening to the scanners for vegetation fires, house fires, barn fires. And it puts us to an advantage that we can know where it is. We listen to what they're calling out for. And it kind of gives us a heads up. Then we can start preparing, because then we know. Because our goal is to get in and get out before the fire department has to, to get in there. We also have a program where we register animals throughout our community so we know where animals are. So if we hear a particular road, we can call those people that are registered with us and find out if they see smoke, smell smoke, if they're comfortable. We also know then about their animals. If their animals load, how they load, how their driveway set up, we go out, we look at the properties. We know, we take notes and we have, we have a lot of animals that are registered with us. So, it is all in prepared. We are prepared to help those animals. So we can get in there, get them out, and our sheltering crew can start opening up. So we, that's one of the things that we do that is prepared, is registering our, our animals in the area. Um, we also, as mentioned before, we are ham operators, most of us, a lot of us. Uh, and we offer, or we don't offer, but there are classes available called a ham cram, and it's a, it's an eight-hour, all-day program, and it, it gets you, uh, uh, your license. So, we listen to it, uh, or we are able to then communicate, because a lot of the places that we go, we have no cell site. Ham radios can get down in canyons where, where phones can't, can't work. So uh, those are a couple of things that we do to prepare. Um, and so I'm gonna go just through this little PowerPoint uh, presentation. Uh, the other thing that we do do is we offer where we'll go and do barn um, assessment where we can help you, where you store your hay, where your propane tank is, how your barn is set up, because a lot of times people get stuck where they have to shelter in place. So if you have to shelter in place, you need to have a really good plan because you don't want to have your horse next to where your hay is or your propane is. You want all of that taken away. Plastic fences melt. Uh, wood fences melt. So there's, you know, you have to think about all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll go out and, and help you with that. So let's see if I get this right. Oh yeah, so the other thing that we do is we do trainings. We do trainings once a month. Uh, we have a fire safety class, we have a first aid class, we train on the Anderson Sling. Um, the Anderson Sling that is out in front, that is our Anderson Sling. We have two that we provided for our community. We have one in North County and one in the Central Valley. This is an actual call that was at a barn. This uh, horse was Henry. He was found early in the morning at feed time, not able to get up. and so. Station 21 is who houses our uh, sling, and this call was in Los Osos. Um, it was determined that he couldn't stand on his own, so we uh, called 21, and 21 came in with the sling, and uh, Henry was placed in it, and he, we, they got him up as straight as possible. This is. Um, this apparatus here is provided by, that is the fire department's tripod, and it's hydraulic. So there's much more fancy than ours is, 
The Anderson sling, for you, those that don't know, it's, it's also used for helicopter rescue. So a horse that's down in a canyon um, or in the back country, wherever, we can help with that. Uh, we use our CHP helicopter up in our area. Going back to Henry, Henry did not survive that incident. He uh, was determined he probably fractured his back. So, um, but he was well cared for up until then. So some of the, these are just some of the calls that we did last year. Uh, this is in a Pomo fire. This was a 100-year-old barn. Uh, the horses were in directly in to the, um, if I, I, that doesn't do that right, no. <laughs> Sorry. So these horses were in right into that direct smoke. They were all over the age of 30. There was three of them that were there. The owners kept the halters in the barn, so there was no way to help those horses because the, the halters burned. So we, uh, heat members came in, we had halters, we were able to move them to safety, which was just from here to that arena. We just got them out of harm's way. Uh, it all burned down though, all of their medications, all of their feed, all of their hay, everything. So we were able to help them with that. Uh, we had extra stuff to give them until they could get in um, contact with their vet. So um, the, the moral of that story was to make sure that you leave your halters. Uh, their complaint was that they did not like that the sun faded it. So, um, you know, buy a couple cheap halters and throw them on the fence. So that was their barn. It was a mess. This is, shows the, how close this propane tank is to their, their barn. It was just a driveway away. And um, so they, they put the truck on it. So as nothing more could happen to it because we all know where it goes. One of the things that you can do is make sure halters are accessible because if you don't have a halter, you can't help the animal. Um, again, know where your propane tank is to your animals. And um, always have good defensible space. Smoke inhalation is probably one of the serious things that can happen to your horse, um, plus being burned. Um, so these are kind of set up for our trainings. This was the Alamo fire. That's us on standby. You can see how big that one was. The Whittier fire was just as big about two hours after that. That was the camp, the start of the camp. So Cal Fire brings in their, starts bringing in camp. They start setting up. It's pretty amazing to watch. They start building a city. They truly build a city. It's fascinating to watch. They have laundromats that come in. They have sleeping stations. They have, they really take care of the crew. This is a little, Horse here, he's five, not halter broke. So we got the call, my partner and I, at two in the morning that we had to load this horse. And uh, it took some creative maneuvering. We finally got him loaded with whips and got him up in the trailer. He was very good. He was a really nice little horse. Um, just not halter broke at five. But um, then we went back because they had, they had three other horses on property. And so she said, go, we're good. We're all set. My partner and I left. Two hours later, we got a phone call. They couldn't get the other three, one horse to load. Uh, so we went back and we helped get them loaded. But as we were loading them, I looked down at our trailers and she had two flat tires in her trailer. So those, that's part of what you gotta do. You gotta make sure that your trailer is set to go. And this was the Stone Fire. We were on the Alamo Fire and setting up down there when we got called up to North County on the Stone Fire. So we had to leave there and knew that Santa Barbara crew was covering uh, the Alamo fire and, and then at that same time the, the Whittier fire. So we went up to North County. We just sat, sat on that one. We weren't needed. Uh, Cal Fire was able to knock the fire down. It, it burned, I think, 25 or 50 acres or something. So we were able, that was the Stone Fire. Oh, that's the Hill Fire. That was another one. Hill Fire was right after that. <laughs> 
It was kind of, that was kind of a lot. There, we had several right in a row. This is all in North County. This was our staging area. We actually staged at a Cal Fire station. Uh, and we were there, and as we, they got busier, then we had to move up the road because they needed to bring their personnel into this really tiny little area. So uh, we were allowed in uh, to the active fire zone. They allowed us to go in with um, escort with the sheriff's department. Uh, we evacuated, in that case, nine animals, some chickens, which we turned a horse trailer into a chicken hut and uh, the goats lived in a trailer, I think. Um, so and the other thing that we do is we were able to go in and help after the fire with um, caring for animals that had to be left behind. Uh, on this instance, again, I cannot stress the importance of teaching your animal to load. We had to leave a horse uh, that would not load. We had its partner loaded and not able to do it. We allow ourselves 15 minutes to load and go and it wouldn't load, so we had to offload the other horse. We were in contact with the owner via ham radio, because there's no cell site up there. We have a dispatch center, so we called into dispatch and spoke directly with the owner, and she said put ho both horses back. And it's very, very hard to do that when your active fire is right around and you have to put these animals back in harm's way. So load, load, load. Can't stress that. And teach them to load in anything. So. Make sure your horses load. I'll try to read this. Wait, wait for it so I don't have to keep turning around. Uh, so the emergencies happen, and so you have to be prepared for any type of an emergency. And the other thing is, is that if you do ch choose to stay and you lose power, you lose your well. You can lose your well, so you won't have water for your animals. So you need to, to be prepared for that water-wise, hay-wise, whatever, medication-wise, all of it. Um, make sure you're, you're prepared uh, and your vehicle is prepared. Um, and the other thing is, in our area, and I, I'm sure Refugio, because I've worked that canyon too, um, it's not very well marked. Homes are not very well marked. And so if you are having, that's one thing you should think about is marking your facility really well, so it's very visible. Day or night, smoky, it's, it's, it's not really easy when you're out there. Like I said, we assist law enforcement um, with um, on calls. This is a little filly, she was 10 months old. Um, she had come home, the owner put her in a 20 acre pasture and uh, left her. He brought her home on Saturday and on Easter Sunday she jumped a six foot chain link fence with three feet of barbed wire. And um, she was found on a road that is a 55 mile plus road and um, found bleeding and injured. I got the call at, I don't know, 10 or 11 at night saying that there was a, a horse hit by car. So the first question I ask always, is there blood present? And there obviously was. And she, um, so I immediately call the vet and then I call my, um, the person that dispatches us to let her know I was going out on a call, called John and Charnell to come out with uh, their horse trailer because I knew we'd probably have to, to ship her. So we, we hauled the little filly out to animal services with the veterinarian. We assessed her on scene. Um, she, was, she was pretty beat up. She was pretty beat up, really just a nice little horse. Um, very quiet, uh, just let us do with what we wanted with her. She was just so sweet. Um, so this little mare was in animal services for over a week before the owner responded. He had no idea that she had jumped out of this pasture. He thought she was good to go. And so um, before she was returned home, we requested that the deputies go out, uh, the rural crime investigators that we have in our area to ensure that her pin or her home would be safe for her because uh, we certainly didn't want to pick her up again and the owner complied and the, the deputies uh, were comfortable when they went back out to check on her that she was going to be fine. So uh, she has some pretty good scars though. This is Mister. He was an 18 month old bull down running down another busy highway. Uh, I happen to be on that call. This deputy is over six feet tall, so I s think you can see how big that boy was. Uh, it took the owner a couple hours to respond, so we kept him entertained 
with uh, heat or with uh, hay and, and goodness there. But uh, it was funny where we were able to corral him because it was the only place was a school that made glass top tables and chandeliers. <laughs> And so it was kind of a challenge, but we, we came up with a plan, and uh, you know, so we, we kept him entertained for those couple hours, and he was, uh, he was very sweet and, and jumped right on the trailer when they opened the door, so we were appreciative of that. And he didn't break anything uh, while he was there, so these are uh, our neglect horses. So this horse was, uh, this is Lucy, and um, this is in Napomo, and uh, she was uh, part of a raid when the deputies came on scene. She had no food or water, uh, nor did her, her uh, partner, uh, Ethel. Um, so they were um, not named. I named them Ethel and Lucy, and uh, they were an immediate seizure, an immediate. Uh, so I went out and, and picked them up. So. Um, that, that's Lucy there. This is Sheldon, um, and he was a dump and go in North County. Uh, he came in, this, this is six weeks into recovery, the left side, uh, so he looks markedly better than when he came in. And um, that's him probably on about two months into recovery, two to three months in. Uh, all of these horses are now in sanctuaries. Uh, Lucy and Ethel are both that was Ethel. That's Lucy, I apologize. Ethel was the Black Bay. Um, the halter grew in her face. Um, both of these horses um, had elf slippers on. They had rotation of their feet. Their coffin bones were um, damaged and uh, they were not able to come back from that. And Ethel actually had to be euthanized because she had so much rotation and she was, we could never get her comfortable. Lucy on the other hand is um, doing quite well. So this is Mac. Mac is uh, a Pertron that was a driving horse for many years for the Santa Cruz Driving Company. Was given to a woman and she couldn't care for him. This horse collapsed in my horse trailer when I picked him up, he was so weak. And it took the deputy, the vet, and my girlfriend and I to lift him and get him basically stuffed in the trailer, is all I can describe it, but we had to get him out of harm's way. Here he is, uh, he looks markedly better, but he still looks better today. He is the Perina senior feed um, model horse. They use him on their ads. You probably have even seen it on Facebook. He's their, their model horse, and he's just, I love that horse. I, I would have kept him. Uh, this was uh, the Sheriff's Department. We did a seizure out in California Valley of 11 horses. I uh, had no food and uh, really poor quality of water. Uh, six of them were stallions, six of them. Yeah, that's right, five. There was five, yeah. Th two baby stud colts and three adult stallions. And she, uh, and then the other two were mares and foal. There was a mare and a foal that had been attacked th three times by a dog, a six week old, and it had to be euthanized. Um, so we assisted with that. That was a challenge. None of them were halter broke or, um, that was a <clears throat> fun day in 110 degree weather. So training sessions, I just will touch really quick on those. Uh, we put on trainings uh, through January through October every month. And we uh, ensure that everyone that goes out is trained and is, has the most, you know, we want to make sure that everyone's safe when they go out. So we work with um, uh, different, like I said, different groups, and I'll show you some of the ones that we do. But we have, um, Okay, Anderson Sling obviously is one of them. We do it at Farm Supply. We use their plastic horse, and uh, 21 comes over and, and works with us. And it, that's a hands-on. We have all of our people practice with it. When we go out on these calls, we are not the lead. Cal Fire is the lead. We're simply there to assist them 
and to ensure that they're in the safe zone when they're around the horses. A lot of these people, a lot of the fire personnel and emergency personnel have never been around large animals. And so it can be quite frightening for them. So we are simply there to ensure. We always have a veterinarian on scene when we are using the Anderson sling because the horse definitely will be tanked up, but uh, it can be put under general as well. If you're gonna fly it, you're gonna put it under general anesthetic. So we just do different, that's Charlie. So it's good for the, the fire personnel too to do it. We also do where we do live demonstration. This is a young stallion uh, at the equine center and he's under, uh, you know, he's had a cocktail and feeling nothing and being very, very good. And he was cute, a little tea stallion. We work, uh, we have a trailer rodeo every year where we have uh, CHP and we, we practice our backing skills and we set up a course usually at the Elks Rodeo and um, CHP goes over each trailer and truck and makes sure that it's hooked on correctly or gives us advice. There's ever-changing rules and regulations for Class A driving, for Class C driving and he goes over those each year with us and makes sure that we know the laws and helps us to understand we've had a couple of rodeos and found where people either A, had too small of a vehicle and were towing too much, or um, another one was a woman was just getting ready to go cross country with her horse and uh, the axles on her trailer were broken and she was leaving the next day. So he was able to pick that up and I, we all learned from it and what was, what to look for. So. Um, that's a, a really good one. And again, it, it kind of helps us understand who can drive out there um, and back and, and their skills because if you can't do it on a sunny, warm day, and you're not going to be able to do it when it's you know, foggy and, uh, or smoky. We also do where we do a trailer tipping, again with Cal Fire, where we bring in a trailer and we put our model horse in it and um, they practice their saw skills. And again, we're there to assist them to where you would be. And uh, obviously a horse that's been involved in an accident like this with saws going on, they would be under a general. So again, a vet is always on scene when we have an accident like this. And we do respond to trailer accidents. So they, they get their toys and they get going. It doesn't have to be boys, but this, on this case it was all boys. 90% times we have boys. Yeah, so um, this is, uh, we also have the rescue glides, which are these right here. The horse is on the rescue glides. So those are other things that we use in emergencies and we use out on in the field. Uh, horse down a canyon, we can glide it up a hill. Um, so, Usually on a trailer accident like that, we would cut the top, put the slide under it, pull it onto the slide, and then able to move it. This is how the horse traveled home. It was, we did get some interesting looks. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it was kind of fun driving him home. <laughs> that was another, that was at 21. That's a trailer cut up that we had at 21. That was our previous year. That was, uh, oh, that was Charlie, I think, that we borrowed. We do equine first aid class. Um, Dr. Andy DeBurn is the vet that we normally use on an emergency, and he comes out. So we have a, a class each year, and he goes over what to look for, how to care for the wounds, and uh, talks about smoke inhalation and all that. Um, goes with some of the stuff that we deal with out in the field. Uh, this is Barbie Breen. She loaned us her facility this past year, which was really nice. So these are our, our trainings that we are having up and coming. We have our procedure and protocol next month, uh, February. Uh, fire safety, so Cal Fire hosts us. They go over what to look for, how to respond in fire, how the fire moves, what to wear, how you should prepare your home. 
so they are very good with us. Human first aid, we encourage everyone to be CPR and first aid um, trained, also on AED. We train on the AED. We have Chris Van Solen, go like that. She's a first aid instructor, and she has handouts and some information today. So if anybody would like to speak with Chris, um, she's, she's a HEAT member. <laughs> Chris is a longstanding member. Um, trailer rodeo with the CHP, the trailer cut up. We're going to do a radio communication where we're going to practice our ham and communicating over the radio so people get comfortable. Uh, and then we, we get down into a live drill where we actually have people come out with their trailers and trucks and we give them addresses and we send them out and um, there's, we don't actually do live hauling at that time, but we have them go into a facility and there's paperwork in that facility describing the animal. And then they come into our sheltering and they go off the piece of paper we've given them to fill out our paperwork. So we cover all bases and know where we have weak points and where we have strong points and we bring it all together. Uh, and then we work with a professional trainer on loading difficult horses and how we can do it and quick things that we can learn to do it. Because um, again, talk about loading all the time and go home and <laughs> it, it just doesn't happen. You know? So we always have horses that don't load and it's, it's one of the hardest things for a uh, rescuer to have to put a horse back. So um, that's basically what heat, heat does. We you know, enjoy our work and we, we do trainings and have good turnouts every month. And again, we're, we're moving down into San Inez and, and down into Santa Barbara. So if anybody's interested or has questions, please feel free to ask us. We have a, a lot of our teammates here.